President of Football Operations John Spano said all of the right things in regards to how this team is going to find their new head coach and general manager. But for this fan base, he's going to have to prove it. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for eight seasons, but this is our sixth year as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? After that tragic beatdown the Chargers received, on Thursday night football, they decided to part ways with their general manager and head coach and president of football operations, John Spanos, spoke to the media for about an hour and made it clear that there was not going to be any restrictions on the amount of money it was going to take to be able to bring in the right men to lead the Chargers into the future. And that's for the Chargers is the narrative they're trying to bust, right? Being a cheap ownership group, basically. And John Spanos, even though he is the president of football operations, is part of ownership. And they're trying to change the narrative there. And they have to show us, right? And they have to prove it. But today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Cre- download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. David, president of football ops, John Spanos talked to the media. And my biggest takeaway is like, He's hitting all of the things that you want him to say. He's hitting on all the things that he has to do. Like all of the things that came out from Eric Smith or Chris Rim of ESPN in the article is kind of outlining, outlining what he said to the media. Basically had him, you know, hitting on all the big things. And the media did a good job of asking him the right questions, I thought, from what I could tell was said. But he has to prove it because the Chargers are a scarred fan base, right? And right now they're reeling not only, you know, from this last season, but also the ghosts of years past with, you know, Philip Rivers and him never making it to mountaintop and now seeing it kind of play again with Justin Herbert and his career. And the biggest thing he said was this, the commitment to winning and the commitment to do whatever it takes to get there is as strong as it's ever been and really will not waver. But David, it is time, no pun intended, to kind of put their money where their mouths are. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at what the Chargers coaches have been paid the last three or four iterations, they have universally been some of the lowest paid coaches in the NFL. And if you look at the top of the head coaching you know, market, as far as salaries are concerned, you know, all those guys are making 10, 12, 18 and even 20 million dollars per season if your name is Bill Belichick. Right. So the Chargers need to be prepared to absolutely put their money where their mouth is if they're going to want to go out there and get a big fish they're going to have to pay the big bucks to be able to bring the right guy in yeah and this is something you know that they've been accused for of uh, for a while right and it is going back to you know a lot of people saying that the spanishes are cheap and there's a lot of reasons you know that you could say that and i think there are some ways they've gotten away from it in recent years not to totally not place any blame on them because We'll talk about, you know, what things have been said specifically by former head coach Anthony Lynn later on that kind of lead you to think, okay, well, are all the resources getting put in? But as far as going and getting that coach, I say prove it to me because the last few head coaches the Chargers have hired have not been, you know, highly paid head coaches. They've also all been first time head coaches, Brandon yeah. Staley, Anthony Lynn, Mike McCoy, not a proven guy like a Marty Schottenheimer, right? Even Norv Turner was someone who had done it before, but like, I think what fans want to see is you go out and make the big splash right so when you say this right when asked if the franchise would be willing according to chris rim to spend 20 to 25 million dollars on a coach spano said in part i can tell you that there have been no discussions internally about there being a max so he's basically saying he will will spend whatever it takes to get the head coach that they want right i mean that that sounds great i mean it it sounds sounds wonderful it's music to my ears but i've heard that all before I've heard it from different head coaches. I've heard similar sentiments from different people, you know, across the NFL. It's all great. It sounds wonderful, but I need to see it. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think if you're really about it, about it, right? If you're really about it, about it, be about it. 
go to Jim, Jim Harbaugh and give him an offer he can't refuse, right? Give him the godfather offer. Go to Jim Harbaugh and say, here, maybe not a blank check, but we are willing to pay you, you know, with more than Michigan's willing to pay you. Yeah, right? we heard 11 to 12. All right, let's go 16 to 17 and let's call it a day. Right. If you're really wanting to get someone that is not just going to be your head coach, but potentially shift your entire franchise around. I know me and you have not been shy about saying, hey, it is Jim Harbaugh. Right. And then That's the next right. tier of guys. That's kind of how we felt about it since yep. they decided to move on from Brandon Staley. Right. But like, I totally understand Chargers fans hesitations to believe that they'll go do it. Like, the thing is, is now what they put themselves in is like, okay, well, if they go hire a cheaper head coach, then it looks like they're not kind of getting away from that, right? Like, unless they go make a big splash like a Bill Belichick, like a Jim Harbaugh, they're not going to get rid of that narrative with just that hiring alone. How they kind of maybe, you know, surround the staff of a younger guy if they go that way, maybe be able to tell us more. But, like, it is crazy, though, because at least it feels like they're in the hunt for it. And they were reportedly in the hunt for Urban Meyer. And I guarantee you Urban Meyer was making a ton to be, you know, the worst head coach in the NFL that year. <laughs> but the part of the thing is, is the Chargers were in on it, right? That's the important yeah. part. What he's telling you here is they're not going to not be in on someone like Bill Belichick. They're not going to not be in on someone like Jim Harbaugh because of the money. And that's what you want to believe, right? Maybe it's other reasons. Maybe they have other reasons they wouldn't, you know, pursue Bill Belichick as their number one options. Maybe there's reasons they would stay away from Jim Harbaugh, but they're saying that money is not that issue, right? And, and that's and what this team be. is telling you. They can't. It, it can't serious. be the issue. Like, I don't want to hear any more excuses about money that has no impact on the salary cap being spent. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'm not well, trying to hear. Well, fans don't care. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm not like, trying to hear that. That's what I mean, it is. Yeah. You're, you're, a you're a bunch of billionaires, okay? Right. Yeah, I mean, and I don't care about the, oh, you're not a rich billionaire. Hello, you're a billionaire. I don't, like, right. we're talking about with a B here. So I'm not trying to hear any of those excuses. Oh, I, I'm getting a first-time head coach again. Or, or oh, I, I can't spend the money to, to get these guys the, the right equipment or the right facilities. No, I'm not hearing any of those excuses. All of those are controllables that you are not governed by a salary cap. There is no limit to the amount of money that you can spend on how this affects your football team. So don't let there be a limit. And I thought this was an interesting quote because it's not always about money, especially with the big names. It's about power. And John Spanos talked about that as far as how meddlesome is he going to be? How meddlesome is this ownership group when it comes to the decisions that they're making? He said, I think that our style as owners, I think that it helps as well in regards about what I said about our philosophy, which is we hire really good people and you let them do their jobs. You support them as best you can. You work cohesively together. But that's the other thing we're asking here, right? Because it's like, I'm willing to to see what happens, right? Like I'm willing to let them put their money where their mouths are. But I think the other big thing is how much power are they going to be able to give up or willing to allow someone like a Jim Harbaugh to have? And what we all want is hire the guy, hire the guy like a Jim Harbaugh, right? And get out of the way. That's exactly what I want. I mean, because, hey, like we're talking about a guy who is the president of football operations who is a part of the ownership group because he's a part of the family business. Correct. And it's a family business. Yeah, that's you know, that's something that, you know, he has to take some accountability for what his role in this failure has been as well. So, I mean, honestly, what I would like to see is them truly hire those people, get them in the building and then step away and then be an owner. Don't be the, 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 the people that are in there trying to help make the decisions. No, yeah. that didn't work. That has not worked. So you need to step back, allow these people to come in and do their jobs, and then let the chips fall where they may, knowing that your hands are not all over the operation. And that's what you want to see. And it's always trying to parse what kind of role John Spanos has as far as the personnel on this team, you know, sure. this team, how it drafts and things like that, right? But like... You have to be willing to trust who you hire and let them work. You have to be willing to yeah, let no one them likes build a micromanager. It in their image, right? If you want, if you're getting the perfect person, if you're making the right choice here, you want to let that person build it in their own vision and, and not yeah. get in the way of that. And that starts with you know having unlimited funds or you know close to that to be able to build it, right? And it's not just about what the coach is getting paid; it's also about what his staff is getting paid, right? Yeah. The willingness, hey, yeah, you're spending $12 million a year on Harbaugh. What are you spending on who he's allowed to bring in? Things like that. But it's also the resources that you're putting into this team, which have been really, really bad. And they think it's going to get better, and they say it will be. So we're going to talk about those comments coming up right after this. 
First, I need to tell you guys, though, that buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, and Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. I know that there's a game this weekend you guys could be going to. You could, in person with Game Time, go watch the Chargers get better draft position in primetime December 23rd on Saturday night. If you don't want to watch it on Peacock, Game Time can get you in to SoFi Stadium to watch that big game, watch the Chargers secure an even higher draft pick. But the best thing about the game time is that it has the game time guarantee. It means you'll always get the best price. If you find the tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference, and you'll always get to see the view from your seats beforehand, which is great because you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. David, spending is spending. And what the Chargers kind of pointed to and John Spanos pointed to when he was talking about, hey, we're willing to spend and we have been spending. One of the things he talked about was just, hey, we've had one of the most expensive rosters in the NFL over the last couple of seasons. We've spent the cash we're doing other things, but when he was asked about, okay, how as an owner, if you're not getting involved in the personnel decisions, how can you support this team? Like what, what role do you play? And this is what John Spano said. He said, number one, it's providing the resources, whatever they may be, providing resources such as spending on players. We've had one of the most expensive rosters in the league and cash spending is the highest in the league. But he also said, it's about everything else as far as, hey, we're willing to spend money on the training facility that they're building. We'll talk about that, right? But the problem is, David, is they've been questioned about this in the past. And this also kind of falls into the category of like what you're spending on these things don't have anything to do with the salary cap, right? Like you can spend and get the most expensive everything else and the charges have been kind of known for and are trying to kind of rewrite the narrative on being the lower end of those, you know, what these teams are spending. Yeah, I mean, I think that really doesn't uh, end up being any more clear than what Anthony Lynn said about, you know, the resources at his new location. He said, this organization will do whatever it takes to win. He said, the resources out the ears. That was the difference from me compared to what I was going through in L.A. So it's just like, man, this is what it's supposed to be like. I forgot how that Ooh. felt. That is a flamethrower of a statement, a very big indictment on what things were like. And now, to be fair, when he was the head coach of the Chargers, they were playing in the soccer stadium. So yeah. they, were, they were waiting, you know, for the most part, waiting for SoFi to and be built. And he also got fired, right? And yeah, <laughs> like, he got fired. Yeah, so obviously there's a little salt in, in that statement as well. But I don't think that it's really that far off from the truth because... It's not, he's not the only person we've heard it from. He's That's not the, the only one to this, complain about this. Yeah. This is chargering on an off-field setting, right? Yeah. The Chargers charger on the field, but how they're known off the field and the money they're spending on the resource and things like that, going back to San Diego days, right, and how much yeah. money they're spending on all of those things, they are known for be being cheaper. The great news is they have a chance to change it, but like hearing those comments from Anthony Wynn and saying, hey, as a, a running back slash assistant coach here in San Francisco, I have all the resources I need. Putting the resources in is very, very important. It is. It's extremely important. I mean, you have to know that, you know, you're having the money to be able to go out and do the things that you need to do at the highest level. I mean, things like nutrition, things like strength and conditioning, those yeah. things should all be state of the art. All, all of that, you know, should not be a second thought because you are grooming and you are teaching and you are facilitating the training for the best high performance athletes right. on the face of the earth. So you want to make sure that that output is as completely high as you can allow it to be. Well, and look back at last year, David, the NFL had an anonymous poll where they asked players from around the league to kind of rate the facilities and everything like that with the team that they were currently on. And it was scathing for the chargers. They ended up Very firing so. their head trainer because of that seemingly right. You know, he got fired right before this ended up coming out. Yeah, because they rank 30th out of 32 teams as far as off the field things, right? Not how good is your coach and yeah, things all like of the that. controllables, all of the things that they can control. And a big part of that is because they moved up to L.A. and they're in temporary facilities, right? But yep. like the training staff itself ranked 30th in the NFL, the quality of the food 
that part really bothered me. Maybe it's just because I'm a bigger guy, but the quality of the food that me they're too. serving these players who they expect to go out there and perform at the highest level against the best athletes in the world ranked 29th, right? Pretty much across the board, they were getting Fs. And like also 43% of the players pulled said they felt like they had enough physical therapists. Like who controls how many physical therapists you have? How do you not have enough physical therapists to treat all the players that need it while they're rehabbing from injuries and things like that? So like yeah. those are things that I feel like are especially scathing and have to change. The good news is there's reason to believe, right? Like I've followed the Chargers for more than 20 years. So is David, right? We yep. we aren't going to blindly go into this and say, hey, yes, now they're going to do all these things. But I do think one of the things that is at least a step in the right direction is the new facilities that they have in El Segundo because that is going to fix a lot of the problems that were complained about in that anonymous poll because it's like you have a brand new state-of-the-art facility on the horizon that should really, really help a lot of these things. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's it's a beautiful thing. And also, like, you got to know that, you know, having a brand new facility with – all of the best things to be able to help get that maximum output from your players is not an attractive thing for a you know a prospecting head coach or general manager i mean that is a huge feather in the cap for the chargers to be able to have that and say hey if you got if you come in to my organization and you're leading my organization you're going to know that we're going to have the best facility in all of football yeah. to be able to train our guys to be able to facilitate them getting the best food, them getting the best care, because we have the best facility. That right there is a huge, huge bargaining chip for the Chargers to be able to say, hey, I know things haven't been great in the past, but I am putting my money where my mouth is, and I am committed to getting the best possible quality uh, of you know supporting cast and supporting uh, you know elements that I can for my players. Yeah, and I mean, that's a big step, and you're right. It is a nice feather in the cap for any prospective GM and head coach. Like, you don't want to be going to the place that has the 30th ranked weight room, the 30th ranked training facility. Players saying that there's not enough room in the hot tubs. Players that are saying that there aren't enough room in the ice tubs. Playing that are, players that are saying that they have to wait in long lines to use the shower and that privacy is an issue, right? Like, those are all things that not only would deter potentially other head coaches and, you know, guys that are coming in. What about the players, right? What about Absolutely. the players that have to use these facilities every day as far as being a free agent destination and things like that? So, like, he says there's a lot to be excited about here. We've got a brand new facility opening up. That's going to be a big boost, a big plus for this organization. And he's right. And I think what you're hoping for, too, is that the next general manager, right, the next regime, the people that are going to be enfolding this next vision and this next era keeps that the standard, right? Yeah. Keeps the ownership's group's toes to the fire as far as, right. hey, we need to keep up with all these things. Hey, this has to be the standard now. Yeah, you have a nice thing. You can't let it get run down. You have to keep putting money into it, right? Yeah. And you also have to be able to keep finding new ways to be innovative and find the best way to take care of your players and make sure you're getting the peak performance from these guys year in and year out. And I think when you look around the league and you look at the teams that are doing this year in and year out, those are the teams that are successful. Those are the teams that are, have the most invested in them, right? Like you get, you, you know, you put in what you're going to get out, right? So you get what you pay in. for, you get what yeah. you pay for. And these are the winning edges that separate the teams that don't win from the teams that are consistently in the playoffs and that consistently win championships. That yeah. is the difference. That's that winning edge that the Chargers, one of those winning edges that the Chargers have not been capitalizing on. And the thing is, is like when you are a team like the Chargers and you're known for being so close, right? Getting close every year, having so many close losses, all of those things like these little things matter. These finite details matter. Like these are the things that you hope as a fan, if they're going to put the money in these places, if they're going to spend money that's, you know, comparatively to the biggest owners and what the top of the line, you know, owners are spending on things, you hope that that's enough to help bridge the gap. That's enough to help you find those hidden kind of values and the things yeah. you can do off the field to get the most out of this team. And this is a step in the right direction. And you, you want to be hopeful. And Chargers fans have the scar tissue. It's hard to be hopeful that this ownership group, because everyone <laughs> wants, you know, a big portion wants them to sell the team. Let's be honest yeah, about it, right? That's absolutely. If that's not happening, the next thing you hope for is, hey, 
maybe they're at a point where they're fed up. They're embarrassed. They've been almost, you know, shamed into, hey, we're not going to be the laughing stock anymore. We're going to do everything we can. We're going to take the money out of our pockets and put our money where our mouths are to make sure all of these things happen and make sure we're doing things right in this next era where they try to prove they're not the team that's wasting quarterbacks careers like Justin Herbert and Phillip Rivers. But it also was interesting what he said about head coaching experience going into this head coaching, you know, decision on who they're going to hire. And he said, you don't necessarily need, you know, a, a head coach that's been a head coach before. So we're going to talk about those comments coming up right after this. I do want to tell you guys, though, about LinkedIn jobs, because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs, because LinkedIn jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. My big thing about LinkedIn jobs is getting things done fast. Obviously, a lot of businesses are in a spot where, hey, if you lose someone, you need to get someone in the door quickly. But the bigger thing to me is finding the right fit, right? Because, I mean, we're talking about the Chargers here. I have a, a long life of experience watching people, you know, hire people that end up being the wrong fits. And you see it throughout your, you know, daily life and my other job and all of those things. LinkedIn gets you qualified candidates, quality candidates, guys that are going to be the right fit people that are going to be the right fit right like that's what the difference is between linkedin jobs and other hiring sites and things like that linkedin knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time and the resources to hire but thankfully with linkedin the process is intuitive quick and easy so post your job for free at linkedin.com locked on nfl that's linkedin.com locked on nfl to post your job for free terms and conditions apply Dave, let's get into John Spanos and what he had to say about the Chargers as they make it. We talked about, you know, we told you yesterday, the biggest decision in franchise history, because that's what this is. They're saying all the right things, but they also had some interesting kind of thoughts on how they're going to about it, going to go about this hiring cycle and what they're looking for specifically regarding their next head coach, because that is the biggest thing. The guy that's going to be paired with Justin Herbert next is obviously the most important of this hiring cycle, even though the general manager is very, very close. But Justin Herbert is the topic. And when you're talking about that, you have to think about first, you know, how are you going to risk the next three years of Justin Herbert's career with another first time head coach? So this is what he had to say. I do think there's value in previous head coach experience. We all recognize that it helps having been through it before. I don't think it can be the end all be all not looking at anyone but experienced coaches, but absolutely we'll factor that in. That's an added bonus. What do you think when you hear that? Yeah, I mean, obviously for me, you know, with the the you know the track record the, of the the Chargers, you know, hiring three first time head coaches and not getting anywhere close to the desired result, save for one magical season in twenty eighteen, I I don't really like what I hear on that. And then and 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 you know, just to play devil's advocate, obviously you do not want to just completely cross anybody immediately off the list. I don't think that's the right way to go about it. You need do need to talk to everybody. You do need to have an open mind. You 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 can't, you know, just close your mind off to the the candidates or the, you know, the possibilities because of a lack of head coaching experience. Personally, right. what I want head coaching experience, you already know I want head co head coaching experience. I've made that very clear with Jim Harbaugh being my number one target. Even if a guy like Mike Tomlin becomes available, oh, sign yeah. me up immediately. Sure. A guy with pedigree, a guy who's been there and done that and has worked for one of the best organizations in the National Football League with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is very important to me to have head coaching experience. So, I mean, I think this is a little bit of a political answer, but I hope they, you know, especially given their recent experience, put a little more stock into that experience than they have previously. I totally agree with that. I mean, what this means, though, is obviously they're not ruling out the options like a Ben Johnson, who we've talked about, like a Mike McDonald, who's someone that, you know, a lot of Charger fans have thought about in the last couple of days, too. But, like, the other thing is, too, is, like, you've hired three straight first-timers, but I think there's an argument that you hired all of the wrong first-timers, too, right? And I yeah. think that's an important part of it. You hired Brandon Staley with one year of defensive coordinator experience. Before that, you got Anthony Lynn, who didn't really have a specialty other than trying to be a leader of men, but then failed at all the just purely head coaching things that he had to do as far as game management and things like that. Yeah. And then you had Mike McCoy, who is kind of like the Adam Gase, right? Who's kind of like some of the other guys who stood next Malibu to the guy. Mike. 
Right. The guys under Andy Reid or the guys, you know, that stood next to Aaron Rodgers or Peyton yeah. Manning. Like it feels like, you know, like Nathaniel Hackett, for example, yeah. the guy who stood next to Aaron Rodgers, right? Like that's what makes Ben Johnson so appealing is he's standing next to Jared Goff. And yeah. Dan Campbell doesn't have like a huge schematic, you know, offensive background either. So those guys aren't getting ruled out. I feel the same way. I, I want Harbaugh. I want someone that's experienced. But we also can't pretend like, you know, Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan and Nick Sirianni and Mike McDaniel and Mike Tomlin and Mike Vrabel and Matt LaFleur, Shane Steichen, Shane Steichen Kevin yeah. Stefanski, all these guys are first-time head coaches. A lot of those guys come from offensive backgrounds. So that's important too. So I like, hey, they are casting a wide net, right? They, they're yeah. not leaving any stone unturned. But to me, it's still, hey, Jim Harbaugh, give him the godfather offer get him to leave Michigan, but that might not be an option. So what yeah. they said is they're hiring or casting a wide net. They also said the approach to hiring the GM and the head coach isn't necessarily in, you know, cemented right now. He said, I just want to make sure we don't limit ourselves and say we have to get a GM first. And may end up being that way. If you look historically at what's happened in the league the last several years, there's been some teams that have been able to execute a parallel path where you interview both at the same time. So that's certainly a possibility, which is interesting as far as how they're going to go about this next step. Yeah, th that is very interesting to me because, like, I, I don't, you know, I, I, both of these hires are very, very important, obviously. You know, they, they you know, serve different facets of your organization. But, you know, to, to see that you would probably bring in guys in pairs, that would mean that these guys have previous relationships or, or, uh, or have, you know, philosophies that kind of intertwine with each other. And so... And you would know, work well together, you would and hope. Yeah, right? you know, and, and knowing all of this off the top... I don't know how plausible that is or how, how many. Different... Or what if it's Bill Belichick, right? Who also yeah. wants to be the GM. Right. And I mean, that and that kind of that quote kind of speaks directly to that possibility is, you know, would you be even giving, you know, a guy like Bill Belichick that type of power, that type of, of control? I right. mean, I think this quote maybe, you know, allows them to say that they entertain that possibility. Well, and if you're hiring a GM, does that put you out of the Bill Belichick sweepstakes, right? Because right. that's what he wants his job to be. So. Another thing, good in theory, right? Let's see how it actually plays out in reality as far as, you know, them casting a wide net, them leaving no stone unturned, right? Them spending everything they have to spend, it all goes together. But yeah. the one biggest thing is always about Justin Herbert. And he said, providing Justin Herbert with all of the resources to help him be his best and the team be its best is without question the number one priority. I'm very grateful Justin is here. I believe in him and I'm excited for his future. And this is the thing, David. Every person's going to say that about the quarterback. They just gave a five-year, two hundred sixty-two and a half million. Yeah, you better deal. believe in him. <laughs> it has to be the number one priority. Yeah, and that has to kind of affect you know what you're looking for in a GM. Is it a GM that you know has only had success, or an assistant that's been around teams that have had success with a rookie quarterback, or people that have had success like they thought originally with Tom Telesco after that guy gets paid and building a, a team around it a quarterback that is already taking up a big percentage of the, the cap, right? Yeah. This is the important thing here. If they don't do it, David, what they risk is turning Justin Herbert into Matthew Stafford. And, and that's kind of, I think, the best comparison I've seen out there just because it's like a great quarterback that puts up big numbers every yeah, single unquestionably year. unquestionably talented. But doesn't play for an organization that is taken seriously or that can seriously build around him. Yeah, and then I mean, and, and and it took Matthew Stafford having to leave that organization to go to a different one that was willing to do anything and everything to be able to put the talent around him. They yeah. said, you know, who to to God with the with the draft picks, we don't care about them. We're going <laughs> to trade all of them away. We're going to get all of the guys that we want, and we're going to bring in all of the players that we need, and they're going to win a championship. And and I think you kind of have to have some of that mentality, you know, when you have a yeah. unquestionably talented quarterback in the room. I think the philosophy, part of the philosophy has to be, I need to go out and give this guy and get this guy anything and everything he needs to be able to be successful. Because if I'm not doing that, I'm doing him and my entire organization a disservice. And the question becomes, is what he needs most an offensive mind for a head coach that can stick around for a little bit, even if he's a first timer and build an unstoppable offense around him? Or is it the hard-nosed coach that's proven that can come in here and shift the entire franchise and build the rest of the team around him to find the success so you're not always relying on him every week to bail you out? Those are both things that are going to happen. But the main thing is, is you have to be willing to spend the kashish 
to be able to leave no stone unturned, right? You can't have everyone be an option if you don't have the money to be able to go get anyone you want. This is so important. You have to be able to spend whatever it's going to take. Gotta the get this say right. They're going to do it. They say they're going to do it. They say they could go after someone like a Jim Harbaugh, right? That's what they're telling you. Let's see it happen. Because for these Chargers fans, I understand your hesitation with this ownership, with John Spanis and all those things. And they're going to have a chance to prove it. This is a golden opportunity, a golden window for this team trying to leave its footprint in a city that doesn't care about them right now to make this big decision to get it right and to bring continued success. And that's all we're looking for. They're saying the right things. Prove it to us. But that is going to wrap things up for today's show. I know we were supposed to do a mailbag show today. We are pushing that to tomorrow. We have your questions. We have your voicemails from the voicemail line at 323-524-7924. It's not too late to get your question in. If you want to hit us up at Lockdown LAC and get your question in the questions post, we will still be taking them until we record the show tomorrow. So make sure you guys are here for that. To make sure you don't miss it, go subscribe or follow for free on the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. You can also hit us up every day on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports for me and Dro Talk SD for David. You can find us on Instagram at Lockdown Chargers and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page, as well as on Twitter at Locked On LAC. So make sure you're back here tomorrow talking about the biggest story surrounding this team who has a franchise-altering decisions to make. But until then, guys, take it easy and go Bolts.